Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope you're doing well today. Um, today I just wanted to do a quick look at, this is one of my treasured possessions, uh, HK3370 stereo receiver from the early 90s. Um, it's a unique, it's a really nice piece, a really well-made and excellent sounding piece. Now this is probably from the last series of Harman that you could really, you know, really could trace its roots back to the beginning and, and hold true to the design philosophies that uh, Dr. Harman had set forth back in the 50s on their equipment. After this, um, Harman had to, unfortunately, because of the advent of superstores, Highland Fretter, Silo, uh, Circuit City, those kinds of people, more consumers were going there to buy hi-fi than they were going to necessarily the neighborhood independent hi-fi store. And so to chase that market after this period in time, Harman had to manufacture to a price point. Before that, they didn't care what the price point was. Build the best product and we'll price it where it needs to be so we can make some money and still offer really high value to the customer because it's going to perform better than similar products. And that's where this kind of falls into. It's rated at 70 by 2 into 8 ohms. I think it's 100 watts by 2 into 4 ohms. But the key thing about this is it'll produce plus or minus 42 amps of current. Now, remember, speakers don't run on watts. They run on current, current alternating current. That's AC. That's music, 20 to 20,000 hertz. But this does it a little different. The frequency response on this amplifier at full power is 10 hertz to 110,000 hertz. So ultra-wide bandwidth was a big buzzword and big goal with Harman products going all the way back to the 60s. Uh, and so was high current because, you know, the engineers at Harman understood that speakers run on current. Now, the problem was advertising and marketing materials from their competitors always stressed wattage. And wattage is okay, but a 100 watt receiver, that 100 watts is the same 100 watts in a light bulb. And, you know, a light bulb doesn't draw very much current. So you can make watts without a lot of current. Um, but anyway, so Harman was more concerned about the current because that's what gave something dynamics, you know, the ability to really move out fast. And, and this would be, again, what I would call a fast amp. Not as fast as the Cambridge Evo, if you saw that review, but this is a very fast amp. Very, mm, got some good power to it. Uh, real clean on the top end, just smooth all around. Um, I was, and you'll hear it, but it's going to be hard in a sound clip. I've had this hooked up to the Monitor Audio Silver 100s, which have a characteristic of being slightly bright. Man, they vanished, and the image was huge through this thing. It was really quite remarkable. Um, so quite a good thing. Um, so vintage products are great in that they can be acquired relatively inexpensively, or you may have one laying around already, or uh, maybe at a relative's house or something like that. And to, to make it modern, add a streamer. Whether it's a Weem streamer or like the Cambridge, there's other ones out there. I happen to, I have a Weem streamer. I just happen to think the Cambridge sounds a ton better. Um, but that brings my mod, my vintage gear forward. And you're going to see that again in other reviews of vintage gear that I have in-house right now uh, in the forthcoming in the, in the next several weeks. So great sound quality. I'm, again, I'm going to run it through every speaker I got in the house and let you hear it and see what you think. And then when we come back, I'll kind of talk about the sound and also we'll do a 360 on it so you can see the goes into and goes out is on the back. So give me a second to reset and we'll be back shortly. Before I spin it around and unplug it, I wanted to go through kind of the front panel a little bit. As you can see, volume control with an illuminated indicator. I like that. I'm an analog guy. I can tell time on an analog clock better because I can see where the hands are. And this is really nice rather than just a number, uh, you know, volume number that doesn't really relate to anything. Got bass and treble controls and balance. And then moving, we're going to go left to right. Power. This is standby. That's main power switch. It's hard to see right there. Quarter inch headphone jack. And they rate it from 8 ohms to, I think, 120 ohm headphones. Then we have uh, the mute button. We have speaker one and speaker two. So you, And you can also control that speaker one, speaker two from the, the remote control. Tuning up and down. Uh, band change presets, AM and FM, and then FM mono. And then here we've go phono, tape monitor, tape input, CD, auxiliary, a dimmer, where you can turn it off. And then that one says, what does that say? Sleep. So you can set a sleep timer. I've never used it, so that's, I never knew what that button was for. So that's the unit. It comes with a really nice remote control. It also gives you some controls over other Harman Kardon equipment. Like if you had a CD player connected, you can do skip and pause and play and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to turn it off, reset, 
We're going to spin it around and look at the back. Here you can see the back of the HK3370, the antenna terminals, AM and FM, and then a funnel input with these grounding plugs. Uh, Harman used active RIAA equalization rather than passive, and it could be on occasion susceptible to a ground loop or a hum. Grounding spade terminal for the turntable, CD in, auxiliary in, two tape in, and then a pre-out main in loop, which is really nice. You can put an EQ in there and it'll EQs everything going through the system. Uh, so great for adding processors or running out to an outboard amplifier or using this, the internal amplifier, as an amplifier, not using the preamp. Then this is very unusual for a receiver of this vintage. Stereo subwoofer outputs. That's very, very uh, unique. Um, and so obviously that's a, a great function there. Also, enough terminals for two sets of speakers. And then switched AC outlets. So you don't see that anymore. I, do, I don't know why. It might have something to do with these folks, UL. But uh, the nice thing about this was you plug your turntable in or your, let's say your cassette deck or CD player, more likely this vintage, um, and you switch this on, it would turn everything else on at the same time. So that made it really convenient. Uh, maybe the, this was the only thing in the system that had a remote control. So anyway, that's the back end of the HK3370. Um, we're going to turn around and we'll go ahead and listen to some music. Okay, everybody, what we've got is the HK3370 hooked up to the monitor audio Silver 100s. Now the subwoofer it's sitting on is not turned on. We're using a Cambridge MXN10 streamer as a source, and you'll see a tablet next to it running Stream Magic software. And we'll play about a minute and a half or so of these tracks from Ultimate Records, and I have their kind permission to use this copyrighted material in my videos, kind of just to give you an idea of the sound of this stuff. And then we'll switch speakers, and we'll do it again, and we'll switch speakers, and we'll do it again. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. switch speakers. Okay, these are the Braun IC1003-8 8-ohm speakers. It's an 8-inch three-way uh, built in Germany. So here we go. speakers. We're going to switch over now to the Wharfdale, Wharfdale Diamond 8.2s. Okay. Here is the Wharfdale Diamond 8.2s and the HK3370. Now typically this is the combo that lives together all the time. Uh, this is my gear. It's normally downtown Chicago at my son Zach's apartment uh, where he listens to it. Um, I was grateful to get it back. I had forgotten how good this combination sounds. 
These little wharf deals are quite good. And the Harman Kardon's got so much power and a lot of authority. So here we go. Okay, now we're going to switch over and I'm going to put the big Elax in uh, and that'll conclude the listing test and then we'll talk obviously a little bit more about the unit in summary. Okay, here we go with the Elac debut F60, de excuse me, debut 2.0 F62s. <laughs> Okay, so that was the Elax on the HK. And again, no subwoofer on any of these. Um, and I will, impressions are the monitor audio sound amazing on it. The uh, bronze, which are very similar to an ADS speaker. Um, I think there's the, the German version of an ADS, uh, which we'll talk about when I do the full review of those. Uh, sounded good, but not a lot of bass because it is a small sealed box. Um, the Warfield Diamond sound amazing with it, and that's why I put that combo together in the first place. And then putting these big Elacs on there, oh my goodness, is it impactful, and I hope it came across in the recording. So we'll go and we'll summarize now, and that'll be that. Well, that's the HK3370 in a nutshell. Great unit. Uh, this is the last of the real true Harman, you know, built product that held to the, you know, the standards that they set a long time ago. If you're looking at used Harman and it's got a ring around the volume, a lit ring or even a, a brush like an aluminum silver ring, um, I would recommend that maybe you avoid that product and go for something this age or older. Uh, you can't go wrong. And uh, right now, Harman is undervalued compared to Pioneer and Marantz. And it's, believe me, it's every bit as good, if not better, uh, than a lot of the Pioneer Marantz models. Um, different philosophy, different de design philosophy with Harman. It was all about sound quality first because Dr. Harman, I mean, he and 
Sidney Harmon and Bernie Carton invented the receiver and they invented the stereo receiver. And that was back in the days when one channel was on AM and one channel was on FM. And then they invented, they brought out the very first FM receiver. So FM stereo receiver. So they have a long heritage. And this is again, kind of the end of the line of that heritage, ultra wide band with high current delivery. You know, the, that clean, crisp, really powerful sound that Harmon has always been known for. So I, I can't recommend it high enough. And again, they're, they're reasonably good values. Um, I, this, I bought this secondhand uh, and I, I don't think I paid very much for it. I bought it in combination with the Wharfdale Diamonds from a couple downtown Chicago. And oh man, did I hit a home run that day. So again, uh, if you're looking at used, you can't go wrong with Harmon. They're, they are serviceable and that's a really good thing. And parts are relatively available. So, uh, you know, I was talking to Kevin out at Sky Labs, you know, Vintage Hi-Fi in Des Moines. Um, and he likes Harman because they just don't break and they, they are repairable. So don't be afraid of getting a Harman if you're looking at vintage. And again, with, a, uh, you know, I had paired up with a, a streamer, which then brings this vintage piece into the modern age with all of the, go, you know, all of the fun stuff you can do in the streaming products like Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect and Apple AirPlay and, you know, UPnP and all kinds, you know, and then the streaming services uh, and all those things. So it, you can really make this thing a very modern piece. So that's the lowdown on this. If you like the video, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I've done something new and I, it's, I feel a little awkward talking about it. You can now join my channel uh, for 99 cents a month. Uh, right now, there's not a lot of perks other than I'll respond to your comments first before anybody else's. Um, and then I may add some things like it's some, maybe some private live streams. Um, I have to figure that one out. I haven't quite yet, but the opportunity became available to do it. So I thought I'd go ahead and, you know, put a flag in the sand, at least start something um, and get that set up. And then I can change it or modify it as I need to. Also too, you'll down along the bottom where the play pause buttons are and the like and subscribe stuff is a little dollar sign. That's a thank you button. If you want to, you know, uh, send me a couple of bucks so I can have a Miller light beer, that would be wonderful. Or obviously help pay for gas because, you know, driving out to Des Moines to see Kevin and there's another vintage shop down in Indianapolis. I may go down and visit and do videos from there. Um, you know, it helps defray the, co the cost of running the channel. And again, I don't do this for a living. It's just, it's kind of a hobby and I have fun talking to you guys. Um, as you can tell, I love to talk anyway. So that's that, uh, disclosure. There are affiliate links in the description below. There are a bunch of playlists. I'd love to have you guys listen and tell me what you think of this playlist. The music you heard in the sound clips was generously provided by Ultime Records out of Lyon, France. Now, their entire catalog is, is pretty much ambient electronic music, which is a, one of my favorite kinds of music. It may not be your cup of tea, but it's really full range and it images amazingly because you remember all imaging, unless it's a live orchestra recording, all imaging is manufactured in the studio. It, it's not really there. Um, so, with the electronic music, again, it can spin around and wrap around your head and it's pretty cool stuff. And that's one of the reasons why I like it. So check out Ultimate Records. The playlist is called Fahrenheit Project by Ultimate Records. And there's a whole bunch of samplers and different stuff from all their different artists there. And let me know what you think. Anyway, that's done. I've rambled on long enough. So this is Ed Holmwood from the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel saying, will you go listen to music already, please? Thanks so much and have a great day.